Hey everybody, welcome back to Around the Twist with Karen. Um, it's been a crazy week. I've been working and knitting on my days off, obviously, and, well, not obviously, you can't see the desk that I can see. Uh, sorry, had to start my timer, make sure I don't go over the allotted amount that YouTube gives me. I do have plans, big plans, but let me show you what I finished first. I finished my labor and socks. They're done. Uh, the ones that I showed you last week, they're out of um, Socks That Rock Lightweight in County Clare, which is still available on the Blue Moon website. I linked to it last week, but I'll put another link up in the show notes. So those are done. They're lovely and wonderful and squishy, and they fit. Yay! Another pair of socks that rock down for me. Awesome. And what am I knitting on? Why more socks that rock? Imagine that. You remember the first queen of beads with the sparklies? I am, I have the cuff done on the second one. Cuff is done. Done, done. I am working my way down the heel flap. Uh, hopefully I'll get that done tonight. But I had a friend come in from out of town for some work-related stuff, and she's going to be here the next few days. Plus, I'm working this weekend, so knitting might be a little light on the ground for the weekend. But uh, the other thing that I actually have to work on with my knitting um, is the toe-up sock that I started for Deb Barnhill's class out at Sock Summit. And yes, I'm wearing my Sock Summit shirt. Yay! Um... But I have to work on that. I'm ready to do my increases. So I think as soon as I'm done with the Queen of Beads sock, I'm going to start on that, uh, that toe-up sock. Because, yes, I'm stubborn. I like to do my stuff top-down. And I'm stubborn about my numbers, Deb. Hi. I'm working on your box <laughs> that I'm going to be sending you. Um, and Jessica, I have the, uh, the, what was it, whatever fiber it was we split, the Yak Alpaca. Was that it? The stuff I showed last week. It's split in half. Yours is boxed up. It's ready to go. I swear, I'm taking it to the post office tomorrow. You probably think I've flaked. I haven't. I promise. I promise, promise, promise. Um, that will be on its way. So, yeah, I'm just kind of slogging through, still waiting for um, the thing I ordered for my mom's Christmas present to come. Uh, the place that I ordered it from, they were actually gone on vacation and found out they didn't have internet use only once they got to where they were going. So they're back in business and they should ha I should have that by the end of the week, early next week maybe. I should really start on dad's Christmas present is what I should start on. But of course, what did I do? Excuse me, coffee. Uh, I went stash diving. <laughs> Stash diving for a Charlotte's Web shawl, and I have since had it confirmed with uh, independent parties. This is going to be my Charlotte's Web shawl. Lovely, wonderful. Um, I'm not sure what order I'm going to put them in yet, but the colors that I've got picked out are Krabby McCrabby Pants that I got out at Sock Summit, the March, March? May. January, February, January, March, May. Yes, the May shipment from the Rock and Sock Club this year that is Pepe La Plume. All the pretty burgundies and pinks in that. Um, Sugar Plums, which is not up on the website currently. It's uh, one of the holiday colors, so that should be coming up in the next couple months. Faulty Dyer, that's pretty too. They all kind of have a burgundy thread running through them. So I know you only need one color going from skein to skein to skein. Like if there's a, the navy blue and Krabby McCrabby pants could go into, uh, no, excuse me. Yeah. However, whatever order they've all got burgundy in them somehow for some reason. But when you're picking out colors for a Charlotte's web, it needs to have one color like the Krabby McCrabby pants, if I start with that on an end, has to have one color in common with the next colorway. The other colors that are in the skin can have nothing to do uh, with what's in the first colorway, but as long as there's one similar color. Same thing, the third one needs to have one color in common with the second. The fourth one needs to have one color in common with the fifth, so on. Um, faulty dyer, and then my last colorway is carbon dating, which I'm not sure if that's up on the website either. This was one of my very, very first skeins that I ever ordered from Blue Moon. 
So sentimental value in that one. Um, but yeah, I probably won't be starting it anytime soon. Now watch, next week I'll have it cast on and be into the third color. Because um, I'm a little, yeah, spastic at the moment. I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of bouncing around from project to project. Uh, but I actually got the idea to do a Charlotte's Web. I'd contemplated it in the past, but I actually got the idea to do it after I saw Turtle Girls out at uh, Sock Summit. So I went to her Ravelry page on it, and hers is absolutely beautiful. I know she's got Fred Flintstone, and I think Blue Moonstone. I don't even know. She's got all the colorways listed on her Ravelry page. I think her name is Turtle Girl 76, if I remember right. It's gorgeous. Saw it in person. It's even more beautiful. Um, but she linked to uh, Katie Did Knit's blog, who actually did a spreadsheet, a five column spreadsheet that tells you what colors to do where, because you're supposed to do this shawl actually with five skeins of Kuigu. So um, there's extra repeats put in, and um, just it comes out huge, so much bigger than the Kuigu shawl does. And I love that because I'm not a tiny person. Um, I'm 5'10", so I need a bigger shawl. It, the, I had thought about the Charlotte's Web, and when I had before, people had said, oh, well, it comes out really tiny. You'll have to do extra repeats. Um, well, now I can, and I can do it with the wonderful socks that rock. So it's going to be like my uh, Mystic Light shawl that I did in the Oregon Red Clover Honey colorway, that it's so soft and so squishy and so warm, but in the lace, it just looks so delicate and pretty. And I love that. It's it's not just a shawl to wear out to be pretty, though. You can wrap up in it at home because it's so comfy. Um, but yeah, I, I need, still need to figure out what I'm going to do for Sarah's Christmas present. And I haven't started Dad's yet, but I really should get going on one of those. And really, that's it for the week. Um, yeah, I basically, I was going to knit more and be further along on the sock last night, the Queen of Beats sock to show you, but then found out about 24 hours ago that my friend Sarah was coming into town for work and she needed somewhere to crash, so it was a mad cleaning spree around here last night. And that's good. The house needed cleaning, but it was, I had intended to do it kind of one room at a time and space it out so I wouldn't get, like, burned out on cleaning and let it go for a month and a half again, but... Yeah, no, everything's clean, straightened up, it's kitchen's clean, groceries are put away, it's, yeah, really, really, I think that's it, actually, so, um, leave comments, uh, let me know if there's anything you'd like to hear me talk about, I know at some point I'm going to talk about washing fleece, um, talk more about the toe-up socks, once I get going on those again, I didn't want to haul them out because I wasn't ready to start knitting on them, and, yeah, that's really it. Just so kind of a sh shorter show this week. We're pushing eight minutes or so. But yeah, leave a comment here. Uh, comment on the blog. Uh, that's at Round the Twist with Karen. Blogspot.com. There's also a new Ravelry group that you can join. Uh, round the Twist. Round dash the dash twist. Um, I've got that on my main Ravelry page. Uh, Michelle was nice enough to start up that group for us. So uh, join up there, comment, have fun, converse, let me know if you think I need to do something different, and I will see you all next week. Bye.